the logic of how an MLA page is designed is that everybody's paper is supposed to look exactly the same so that we're judged not by our formatting, but by the quality of our writing and thinking. So there actually is a theory behind it that makes sense. The goal of this video is to help you make sure that you learn to exactly copy the small details of formatting that are required for MLA. In my course, I don't penalize grades for incorrectly formatted papers, but I also don't grade them. If you turn in a paper that's not correctly formatted by MLA standards, I'm simply going to send it back to you and say, I'm sorry, I can't grade this until you correctly format it. And the reason for that is I don't want to waste your time and mine marking up little MLA rule things that you could simply take care of before you turn the paper in. So this video is really important. You want to learn how to follow the simple rules of MLA formatting. So let's start with basic page layout. If you look at the page, you will see that everything is in the same font. In this case, it's times 12. So your font should be times 12. Also, you will notice that the margins are one inch on both sides. This is the default in Google Docs, so it should not be a problem for you. But sometimes in Word and other softwares, the default's different and you need to check. So spacing, one inch all around, um, font times 12. So what I'd like you to do is stop the video right now and take a look at the paper you're working on and fix that. Put everything into times 12. Make sure you have a one inch margin all around. Oh yeah, and this is also a good time to make sure that your paper is double spaced throughout. So you simply go into your Google Doc or Word document and click on double space. In MLA, everything is double spaced. Okay, so take a minute, pause, check that stuff out, and then come back. All right, so hopefully you're back, and we can now talk about headers and headings. Headers refers to these annotations up in the top of your paper that are your last name and your page number. You create these by going into the headers function in your Google or Word document, typing in your last name, and then using the insert page number function in Google or Word to put the page number. You do not type in the page number here because if you do that, the header shows up on every page and you end up with only one page number. So you have to paste in uh, the uh, insert page number function in your word processing uh, software or in our in case for my classes, Google Docs. So you will see that if you've done this correctly, on the top of every page, you'll get a new page number. That won't look right if you try to manually type in the pages. So that's header. Headings. In MLA, there's a set established format for headings that you must follow exactly. It's your name, your professor's name, the course number, and then the date. And please note how the date is formatted. Day, month, year, no other punctuation. So you simply have to copy this format exactly. No variations are acceptable. This is the rule. Remember, our goal is for everyone's paper to look exactly the same so that you're judged based on the quality of your prose, not the formatting of your paper. One last thing before I send you back to your paper to check and format, title. It's very important to have a good title for your paper. Try to avoid something like paper one, paper two, paper three. Give your paper a title, but then remember to format it correctly. You'll notice that this title is centered. You'll notice that it's not in any different font. It's in the same font as everything else. It's not in bold, it's not large, it's not underlined. Please make sure your title looks like that. So take a moment to pause this video and work on your paper. Make sure your header is correct, make sure your headings are correct, and make sure your title is centered and a regular font. Take care of those things and then come back to the video. All right, so hopefully you've come back now and your paper's really starting to look like this sample one. 
let's talk about paragraphs. One of the things that students will sometimes forget to do when they're paragraphing is to indent their first sentence. And you'd be surprised how difficult this makes to read a paper when paragraphs are not indented because it's very difficult for a reader to know where a new paragraph begins. So you want to make sure that all your paragraphs are indented. You're also going to want to make sure in MLA that you don't put any extra lines or spaces in between your paragraphs. So when you move from one paragraph to the next, the only way that you need to indicate that is by indenting your paragraph. So take a minute right now and make sure that all your paragraphs are properly formatted, they're double spaced, they're indented, and there's no extra lines between them. Because those are the MLA formatting rules we want to copy. And once you've done that, come back to this video. We're going to talk about what quotes should look like and how they should be integrated into MLA papers. Okay, so hopefully you're back now and your paragraphs are looking correctly formatted. Let's look at how we integrate quotes and paraphrases from our sources into our document in proper MLA format. Now we've already reviewed this earlier in the writing process, but I want you to go through your paper carefully and check one last time. Because once again, if this isn't done correctly, I'm just going to send your paper back to you and say, hey, please fix this before I read it. Okay, so the way we work in quotes, first of all, is we want to emphasize working small quotes into our sentences. And so this sample essay is a nice way to do that. Now notice how there's a short quote integrated into the flow of the writer's sentence. Then you get a longer quote in here, and we're not going to do too many of these because I really prefer the short quote, but I want to point out to you some important elements of this. All right. First of all, I really want to focus on the end of the citation. So you see here there's a quotation mark, and then there's a space, and then there's the parentheses. And then finally comes the period. So quotation mark, space, parentheses, page number with no abbreviation within it, and a period. That is the correct closing of a citation. Any variation of that is not MLA correct and isn't acceptable. You just need to take the time to go through your paper and fix these carefully. Notice that we don't have to put the author's last name in this citation because she has been mentioned in the, the uh, body of the paragraph. The only time you need to say Twain or Greenblatt or the name of the author and the page number is if you're introducing a quote that you have not mentioned the writer or source previously in the paragraph. So in this case, we don't need it. So please make sure you go through your paper and uh, check that you have correctly cited the texts in your paragraphs. By the way, I want to show you one more thing in terms of citations of text in your paragraph. Uh, when you do not use a what's called parenthetical citation, the citation that comes in parentheses at the end of a sentence, when you end a sentence without that, but you have quotes, notice that the period, the final punctuation mark, goes inside the quote. So if we look up here, we see that we end with a parenthetical citation. So again, quotation, space, parentheses, page number, parentheses, period. But when we don't end with a citation, it's a different rule. Parentheses, last word, period inside, I'm sorry, not parentheses, quotation, language, period inside the closing quotation. So there are different rules for when you have a parenthetical citation and when you don't, and you want to go through your paper and make sure you've consistently applied the correct punctuation rules when you have a citation and when you don't. I've discussed work cited in a different video, so I'm going to wrap this one up here and just encourage you to carefully review this video as a tool to make the corrections while you're working on your paper. So this is not a lecture you should just sit and watch. This is a lecture that you should watch a minute, go to your paper and fix it. 
Watch a minute, go to your paper and fix it. Now I've used a sample paper here from the library's MLA website. So this is um, what the library's MLA website looks like. <coughs> and you can see there are two sample papers. So I encourage you to go back and look at either one of those. <coughs> There's also a really nice MLA style handout. It's a very valuable tool. Hope this was helpful. I hope you carefully use it to MLA format your paper. See you in Canvas.